Puma finally has a major competitor. It's called Paper and they've just launched their first iteration of their tool, which is currently in public beta. They recently got a $4.2 million seed investment from a major investor. They are calling it the new home for designers with features that don't exist in Figma. So today we're going to check out this tool and see how this tool beats Figma and where it needs to improve to be able to beat Figma. Also in today's video, I got you guys one month free of Skillshare, but more on that later. All right, so I've opened up paper in my browser. You don't have to download anything for this and you can get started in the public alpha. It starts off with this very basic, simple kind of file selection or file creation. There's nothing crazy about this page right now. If I click on file creation, it quickly creates a file for me. Gives my file a cute little name like Vibrant Nest. And as you can see, just like in Figma, there are pages. You can add new pages, which is really cool and rename this later on. You also have some basic tools right here, such as the pan tool, which can allow you to pan across the artboards. The frame tool, which is exactly the same as in Figma. It is, there's a rectangle, some text and shaders. This is something that is unique about this tool and they're trying to promote is the shaders. Now shaders is all these cool effects that you can add from image effects to heat maps to 3D metallic shaders. These are all cool animations that you can add over something else or as a button or anything that you can create here. Now what's cool about this tool is that you have all these parameters you can choose from when it comes to shaders or even things like shapes. So if there is a shape like a rectangle, you will find inner shadow shadow separate, which is again very different from Figma. Now what's really unique about this tool is shaders. This is something that they've promoted on their Twitter, etc. as well. Shaders allows you to add overlay effects effects to your current elements like buttons, text, backgrounds, etc. And even things like image edits. These are basically, these are there to really help your design stand out and for you to build something a little more interactive and unique than just a static UI design that you can already do here. For example, I can add a dot grid like this. I can then change things like stroke width, gap, size, etc. And then I can even, and then even, and even have different effects, pre-built effects that they've created. This reminds me a lot about Framer pre-made components that you can use. Now, some of these effects are also animated by default, which you can then of course change the animation, things like speed. If it's zero, that means it's static. If it's 100 plus, then it means it's animated. Now, much like Figma Auto Layout, which is one of my favorite features, they have something called Wrap in Flex. Now, if I select both of these, I can just say wrap in flex and it is now wrapped. And as you can see, it is inside its own very own frame. Here I can now do everything that I can do with auto layout, horizontal, vertical, spacing, positioning, etc. And this will work seamlessly and perfectly just like in Figma. Okay, so I recently wanted to brush up on my Figma skills, especially advanced level Figma when it comes to designing UI UX and website designs for my business or even designing thumbnails for my YouTube. So I went ahead on Skillshare and found this amazing course by Daniel Scott. It's a very thorough course where I was able to learn things like auto layout, but also got some really good lessons on how to create components that can be quickly interchanged for a nice adaptive design. The classes seemed very interactive and I was able to follow along and create some really cool things inside Figma while I was able to watch these video lessons on Skillshare. There were also some very neat little tricks that he taught me. For example, being able to build a gradient mesh inside Figma without having to use any plugins or anything, I was able to customize things on my own and even practice project where I could actually practice these skills that I've learned in the class on actual projects inside Figma. Not only Daniel, but hundreds of other instructors are here on Skillshare. A lot of them you must have seen on YouTube or Instagram. These are all very skilled and talented professionals teaching on this platform, whether it is for UX, UI design, entrepreneurship, photography, videography, you name the skill and they have it. The first 500 people to join Skillshare right now using the link that I've given in the description will get Skillshare for free for one month, that is 30 days 
of amazing learning from some amazing creatives. I can even build a guide inside this. So just like in Figma, when it comes to grid lines for an artboard, you can basically give grid lines to every element here. Of course, you can't really see it now, but of course I changed the color of this. You can see the grid lines appear here and you can change things like spacing, whether it's column or row. These, all these things you can kind of change from inside here. You don't have to sort of work around like you can do, like you have to do in Figma. So it's already built in. One thing that seems to be sort of a hidden feature here, these three little dots have something called resize to fill or resize to fit. If I click on resize to fill, things will just resize according to whatever the elements are inside this. Everything will start fitting inside this. For example, the text is now expanded to fill the entire artboard here like this. Similarly, if I click on the frame and then click on this resize to fit button here, it will then fit the elements that are in here. So it will follow the biggest element around and then just fit across that element. I think this can be super useful when trying to design buttons, sections, cards, etc. where you want to fill something in. This will quickly just fill it in. One thing that I really appreciate about this tool is the ability to quickly change between properties. Instead of having to go inside windows or having to go inside drop down menus, this has everything up here like gradient, change the gradient, awesome. Then you don't have to go inside. There's a color picker right here of sorts. Then you can change the properties of this gradient real quick. You can flip it around. You can change between distribution, average color through nearest hue. Those are some features that you don't find in Figma. A really cool thing here is that they also have a display P3 right up here in case you want to quickly change. But anyways, if you're working with P3 and you want to really use P3 right here, you're more than welcome to do that. You also have these crazy detailed gradients, which you really don't find in Figma. You can even drag around the values real quick. So if I want to drag around the red values, I can just drag across R right here and it will change the red values. As you can see, the hue completely changes. Same with green and blue. So once again, if you want to make minute adjustments, Figma often doesn't allow it for basic users. Here it's catering to even beginners who can quickly tweak this. You can even copy each of these properties. You can copy the RGB, the P3, or you can change between HSL or RGB here as well. And whenever you want to change the color of something else, you just paste the RGB here and it will take in the values exactly. Again, if this feels much more technically advanced, whereas Figma is a little more user friendly, if you know what I mean. Now, building a cool interactive button, let's just say, let's just take that example, is much easier here. So if I go into shaders now, there are some lights and special effects. I can quickly just create, say, a liquid metal effect, and then I can change this. I can then change things like shape and how I want it to work on my screen. This is really cool. How about I want to add it to my background and make it merge to create this cool background effect for my website. I can quickly go into blending, change this to something like plus lighter or color dodge, let's just say, and I can then expand. I can then expand it and change the speed of it. And of course, if I wanted to cover everything, I'll just say resize to fill and it will cover everything real quick. This looks amazing. This looks fantastic. Now, what if I want to create a button? I have a pulsing border right here. I can quickly readjust the size, of course. I can change the background to 0%. So now it's something like this. And I can now add text inside this. So I can say, hello world and add and change it to something like Northern Lights. Now I can then select both of these, bring it to the middle. If you want to export with the effects, etc., you can choose the effect and actually export it as an MP. What I was particularly fascinated by is that if you have say an effect or if you've created an effect, you can actually export it as an S as an MP4 if you have Paper Pro. This is something that of course is for 
people who really, really want to use it for enterprise and things like that. But of course, the fact that this is available is really cool to have. Now, apart from the effects and these animations, and you can actually go ahead and do some really cool magical stuff with this magical features that they've added. The first magical feature, quick feature, is for colors. So if I want to extract colors from, from an element, let's just say this effect, I can quickly select the element, right click, and say extract immediately create something called magic swatch so again it suits the definition as well magic swatch creates a really cool swatch for you based on the colors and it's smart so it's just not random colors it's, it creates it in this descending order of its lightness as well which is really nice another magical feature that they've recently introduced here is the ai feature it's called image generation and image generation helps you build the perfect image for your project with a lot of different features you have of course you can choose between chat gpt imagine flux recraft and ideogram you can even choose or you can choose variety pack which is basically a bunch of eyes combined into their one unique AI. Guys, you can even hide the other UI from here just so that you can focus on this AI feature and then explain what you want. Now, once I have sunset behind a mountain, I can then say create image and this will generate a bunch of images from different AIs at the same time. So it's not just one AI, it's a multitude of AIs working together. Wow, and that was actually quick. It took like 10, 15 seconds to generate the first image, then the first, second, and third. I really like the first one for say like a website background, but if I don't like the other two, I can of course delete them and I can then build on this one image. So if I click on this, it shows up right here and then I can branch from this. So I can then either copy the prompt if I like this, I can start over from this prompt, which is again just putting it right here, or I can give this feedback and, you know, add stuff to this. So it could be add small birds and it will do the magic. And as you can see, cool thing is it doesn't work on the original image. It builds on top of that original image. Wow, that's wonderful. Now I have two images. The first one's still processing. The second image has these little cute birds on the side. And just like that. And now I have two other options with, of course, birds in the background, which is just exactly what I needed. Now imagine this is a uh, first iteration of this tool. It's basically an alpha. Imagine the cool stuff you can do once it goes into like a beta or a public a beta release. This is the public alpha and it's still really good. Create an inner shadow, add multiple inner shadows. I wanna create an outline, I can create an outline. This is still quite far behind from Figma when it comes to things like prototyping. It doesn't have a prototyping feature yet. It doesn't have any plugins or widgets or none of that. But what it is promoting right now is a much simpler tool which you can use free of cost. There's no cost to it right now, which of course Figma right now has. Most people are now on the paid plans, except students, etc., cetera, who, are, who have the student and education, education plan. There's obviously a gap between, there, there's no dedicated app yet. There's no, it only works on Chrome or Chromium based browsers right now. It does not have, all right. So if you guys like the tool, I'll have a link in the description. You can quickly use this and it's free of cost, so you go, go ahead and try it out. It's, it's something that you can explore and you can work around with the shaders. I'll show some examples of shaders on screen if I can. And, uh, and, and I post such videos every single week, so make sure you're subscribed, otherwise you're gonna miss out. Until next time, take care, God bless.